We all make poor life choices. Take these two guys, for example. They're the founders of a self-driving car company called Zooks, and they've decided it makes sense to try and compete against this. Waymo, the Google self-driving car project, cruise automation, Daimler, Baidu, Uber, and Lyft. But Zooks is different. Its rivals are adding self-driving technology to existing cars. Meanwhile, Zooks is making a new type of vehicle for the self-driving age. Basically, Zooks is making a robot, and its early incarnation looks like the love child of the Matrix, Mad Max, and Transformers franchises. This is Tim Kentley Clay. He hails from Australia, and down under, he was a well-known designer and ad guy. One day, he had an epiphany, a vision of the future full of robotic vehicles, and came here to build them. I sort of just saw the future of how the whole system could work. I said, okay, I need to find a brilliant computer scientist. And so that led me on a journey for six months, actually, where I ended up finding Jesse. That brilliant computer scientist is Dr. Jesse Levinson, a Stanford grad who was sought after by none other than Google itself. I actually visited Google X in 2013 to come and speak on my vision for autonomy. In talking, a fellow said, there's this one guy and he's really good and we can't get him. So that was my signal to go and get him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of your colleagues have run off to companies like Google or, or Uber to retrofit a cars. What, what drew you to this particular task and, and this approach? I've been working on self-driving cars since 2005, and it's pretty clear even back then that it was going to be one of the more transformative technologies for a society. It, it wasn't enough to just solve the technology. You need a product uh, and you need a business that makes sense. And I hadn't seen that in any other company until I met Tim and he shared his high-level vision for what Zooks could be. And that vision is a system of completely autonomous robotic vehicles that can be summoned just like a Lyft or, dare I say it, an Uber. We have a very clear vision at Zooks, which is that AI and mobility will take us out of the age of the automobile and into the next mobility age, which for us is robotics, autonomous transportation. Tim and Jesse take me to the Alameda Naval Air Station, where I'm about to get a test drive and see how a Zooks robot handles. These are very unique vehicles. They're designed in a way that would only make sense if they're going to be fully autonomous. The powertrains are designed for full autonomy. They're fully redundant. They have dual high voltage batteries. They have dual low voltage architectures. You can see they're rigged with compute sensors. They can drive without any human intervention. This is VH4. This is VH5. Do you want to go for a ride? Yeah, I do. All right, do, jump man. in. Zooks has placed cones on the tarmac. The robot is gonna drive out and try to dodge them. And I get to do the whole test sitting backwards because Tim thought it would be funny. Keyboard holder, time to meet my robot maker. And with one swift keystroke, I give complete control of my life over to an AI. <laughs> It doesn't get old, man. <laughs> it's like being on a ride at Disney. These AI robots crank through the course at 45 miles per hour, and the VH5 is set to rip through it at a delightful 75 miles per hour. We can choose all-wheel steering, two-wheel steering, crab steering, dual motors, and then we have direction. I like the crab steering. Zooks got its start here in this abandoned firehouse back in 2015, with only six employees. They've since raised an astonishing $800 million and have expanded their operations into a one-stop robot-making shop. With the help of 400 employees, Zooks is now on their way to turning these prototypes into full-fledged vehicles by 2020. For the moment though, Zooks does most of its software testing in these, modified versions of Toyota Highlanders, which have the decided advantage of being street legal. 
We're actually going to get you to drive autonomously from this facility to our new headquarters in Foster City. And then Jesse's going to jump in and you can drive to downtown San Francisco. We don't know any company in the world that is driving that multi-dimensional degree of difficulty from urban to freeway to dense downtown. So that's a, bi that's a bicycle? That, that was a cyclist, too. That's the car behind us. It's something like the speed limit. Does that get taken by the cameras seeing the signs, or that's something that has to get entered in as you map the world? If there's a sign that's been vandalized, or it's missing, or it's got, you know, growth on it, the vehicle wouldn't know what the speed limit is, and that could cause an incident, right? Or, or a fine. So speed limits are really well understood on the road networks, so we, we put that in as a prior on the map. Okay. So coming up right here, we have to do a left turn yield. So yep. I just got to see this other car. Yeah, so we're a bit concerned about this car that's coming towards us from a prediction level, so we just want to make sure that they do the right thing. And now we're yielding. If you look on this screen, see there's yellow here? Yep. That means we're yielding for that vehicle. Okay. And now we're off. Um, we're about to drive onto the freeway, so this, is, this will be uh, interesting. You can see there's quite a bit of traffic on our left. Yep. And uh, the vehicle's indicating at the moment. It's going to brake a little bit harder because we've got this vehicle right on our six. Yeah. And we're running out of runway. And now we merge in. So that would have been a hard situation even for a human driver. We, we needed to merge and that person on the left was not letting us in. We tried to go in front, they stayed with us and then we had to brake, let them go past and then we pulled in. Yeah. And that was, that was all autonomous and you can see how smooth that was. Good robot. So one of the hardest things to do with autonomous driving is actually prediction. Because you not only need to understand what the state of the world is, you have to say, well, what's the state of the world in the near future? If I do this, what will that person do? Yep. And so that creates very quickly a large search tree. And if the vehicle's gonna drive with good performance, you need to be able to predict well the state of the world in the near future. Here's our, <laughs> our new headquarters. 20 minutes, suburban driving, freeways merging, 100% autonomous. Yeah, that was incredible. That was amazing. All right guys, let's go two for two. No pressure. What's like in each box, it looks like there's like a Y and L. Yeah, like there's a V, an R, and an L. Okay. So V means vision, R means radar, and L means LIDAR. So we use cameras, we use radar, and we use LIDAR. Cameras are really good at seeing what things are. Radar is really good at seeing where things are in terms of how far away they are. And then LIDAR is really good at telling you where things are in 3D at pretty high resolution and pretty high accuracy. And so what we do is we fuse those three sensors together in real time to form one coherent view of the world, which is actually what you're looking at on the screen. Definitely crowded. I mean, that must make it harder, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. We have made it autonomously yeah. to San Francisco. San Francisco. As far as the public knows, Zooks, along with Waymo and GM Cruise, are the only companies capable of doing this kind of drive. And this is the first time they've ever shown the cars in action to the public. Is it madness to take on many of the world's leading automotive and tech companies at the same time? Yes, of course it is. But I say go forth, Tim and Jesse. We all await our Lux robotic rideshare of the future. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more Hello World, click on the link to subscribe.